everybody welcome back to the she shed today's tutorial is going to be making this sock well the other one to this sock and last week hopefully you saw my tutorial on my other sock now they do look very very similar if not the same however the difference is last time I started from the cuff working my way down to the toe and this time I'm going to be starting from the toe and working my way up to the cuff which way is the best? Don't know. Got both good and bad points to both. So why not try both of them and see which one you prefer. I will leave a link below to my first sock tutorial, but search for that and give both of them a go. Put in the comments below which one you think is the best. All right, so what am I going to be using? I am going to be using this cozy wool. It is 100% pure wool. I get this uh, from Linacraft. There are many, many, many different colors. It is so soft. It is awesome and brilliant for feet, especially if you've got sweaty feet. Uh, wool is awesome. So as you can see, 100% super wash wool. This is 175, sorry, 174 meters. It says to use a 4.5 millimeter hook and I go up a size, so I'm going to use a 5.5. And the color is gray marco, mal, gray mal, I think that's what it says. The tools that I will be using, my 5.5 millimeter furls hook, or for everybody else who goes by a letter, number I, or letter I, scissors, stitch marker, I mean, sorry, needle, <laughs> stitch marker. And if you want to be able to count the rows, because then use a stitch counter. All right, let's get this project started. So to start off your sock from the toe, I always start with a magic ring or a magic circle, depending what you want to call it. Start with a tail in the palm of your hand and you're going to be wrapping around your three fingers. Come across like you're making an X and I hold it with my pinky. Then get your hook Go underneath that first wrap, pull the second wrap under, the top wrap under, and twist. Then go back over and get that top wrap again, this is where the tricky part is, and then pull that through, like so. I'll repeat that again, putting the yarn in your palm wrap the yarn around your three fingers and cross over hold it with your pinky get your hook go underneath that bottom wrap pull the top wrap through and as you're pulling it through twist go back over get that top wrap again and that's the tricky part and pull that through that loop that you created on your hook now you can take that off your hand. I'm going to chain one. And now we need to work eight stitches in that ring. So these are all going to be half double crochet. That's the stitch we'll be using throughout. So yarn over, go into the ring, grab your yarn, pull it through. Then grab your yarn and pull through the three loops on your hook. Grab your yarn, go through the ring, grab your yarn, pull it through, grab your yarn, and pull through the three loops on your hook. So we've just created two, and now we have to do eight in total. That should be four, five, Six, seven, eight. 
Now I am actually making a man size today. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I require eight stitches. If you're doing a woman size, do seven stitches in your ring. And if you're doing a kid size, do six stitches within your ring. So when you've got the required amount of stitches in your ring, so as I said, I've got, I need eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect. Then you can pull the tail of your ring and pull your circle shut. And that's the fun part. I like that part. There we go. Now it might come undone, loosen up as you're going around, but you can just pull the tail again and it'll close nicely. We'll deal with that at the end. We'll sew that in. We are going to be working in the round, which means we're going to be going around and around and around and around and around. I'm not going to step up. I'm going to just keep working in the round, which means that's why I need my stitch marker. I need to know where the start of each round is going to be. The reason I do it around and I don't step up is because the stepping up will recreate a seam. And of course, I don't want a seam on my sock. I don't want anybody to see where I did it. And that is actually where it is. But can you tell? Um, no. So that's why I don't do the step up and I work in the round. So for this next round, so that was round one, putting our stitches in the circle. Round two, we are going to be doing an increase in every stitch. So an increase is two stitches in the one stitch. So we're going to increase from eight to 16. So we're going to be doing two half double crochets in every stitch of this round. So yarn over. Go into the stitch, grab your yarn, pull it through, grab your yarn, pull through the three on the hook. Then into the same stitch, yarn over, into that same stitch, grab your yarn, pull it through, grab your yarn, pull through the three on the hook. Then go to the next stitch, can be a little bit tricky to find. Grab your yarn, go in, and grab your yarn and go in again. And do the next one. There's three. And then the fourth stitch. Go two in there. Six stitch. Seventh. And eight. Okay, just checking. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. This next round, round three, we are going to be increasing every second stitch. So in the first stitch, we're just putting one stitch and in the second stitch, we're putting two. The next stitch one, the next stitch two. So yarn over and then do a half double crochet in that stitch. And then in the next stitch, do two half double crochets. Now at this point, I move my stitch marker up to that first double crochet that I did before the two double the, the increase and then we just work around one and two one and where you put your stitch marker, that stitch just before it should always be a two. So an increase. Okay, so the next round, what we're going to be doing is increasing at every 
second sorry every third stitch so single crochet double half double crochet in the next two stitches and then you increase in the third stitch so let's go a single one next stitch another single that's two and then the next stitch you're doing your increase so two half double crochets in that stitch then the next one one and then find the stitch one and then the next one is two one two I didn't move the stitch marker up there. Ah. <laughs> I do get caught out sometimes. There we go. And then two. Okay, at the end of that round, which is round four, you should have 32 stitches. So just make sure you've got 32 stitches. And then when you have, we've finished our increase and we're going to be working our way up the sock. So we're going to be working in the round for 24 rows. Now that is making, so we're doing the foot here, and that is making for around about a size 10 or 11 foot. If you want a shorter foot, just do sh less rows. If you need a bigger foot, just do more rows. So all we're now going to be doing is working in the round for our 24 rows. And it's just putting a half double crochet in every single stitch. So I'm going to be moving my stitch marker up next to that increase there. And that tells me that that increase was the last round of our um, increase round and when I do my stitch in there that'll be the end of the first row so you can use your stitch counter to count how many rows you are doing I actually find it quite easy to count from my last increase there and just count above And so all you're going to be doing is just literally working around and around and around and around and around and around, and around until you've done your 24 rounds. And just keep counting your rows, as I said, from that row just above that last increase stitch. And when you've got your 24 rounds, I'm going to meet you back here and we'll work on the heel. After you finish your 24 rows, or however many rows you require for the length of the foot you're making this for, we are now going to do the heel. So we need to bring the heel out, then we'll work our rows to make the middle part, and then we'll bring the heel in. So we're going to start by increasing to bring the heel out. And for a men's sock, which is what I'm making, we're going to do five stitches with an increase in every stitch. Now, if you want to do the female version of this, it is um, eight stitches we're going to increase by so it would be four stitches if you want to see how to make the female sock how to make the heel and everything is exactly the same as when I did the other video which um, you'll see here and the link is below and please refer to that for this one I am just doing the male sock okay so we're for the next first of all bring your stitch marker up and mark the end of that last row and so what we're going to do now is put a um, increase in the next five stitches so that remember is two stitches in each of the next five stitches so that's one two three 
three, four, five. So just checking one, two, three, four, five. And then just do a single half double crochet in every stitch until you've got five stitches left. One, two, three, four, five, one there. So there we go, we've got five stitches left. One, two, three, four, five. So let's do once again our increase. So two stitches in each of those five stitches. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so, and then the next row, and the next, well, I should say the next seven rows, just putting a half double crochet in every stitch. So no increase, just plain seven rows of half double crochet. So remember to bring your stitch marker back up. So there was my last increase. Let's go into the stitch before that and do seven rows. So once again, remember, you can either use your stitch counter to count your seven rows, or there's your last increase, seven rows above that last increase. So I'm gonna continue doing my seven rows off camera and I'll meet you back here when I have finished those seven rows. After you have completed your seven rows, now we need to bring the heel in. So as on here, we've done this bit here now, and we need to bring it in. So what we need to do is now decrease on the next 10 stitches. So how to do a decrease? First of all, bring your stitch marker up, put it in the last stitch of that row you've just finished. And for a decrease, we're yarn over, go into that next stitch, bring a yarn through, and then go into the next stitch bring a yarn through, yarn over and through all the loops on your hook. So that's one decrease. Yarn over, into the next stitch, bring a yarn through, into the next stitch, bring a yarn through, yarn over and look through all the loops on your hook. So that's two, three, four, and five. So that is five stitches decrease, so 10 stitches altogether that we went into, which makes five decreases. So one, two, three, four, and five. So now we are going to do a half double crochet in each stitch, no more decreases until we come to the last 10 stitches. So just work your way around One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, went too far. Let's count again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Excellent. So now what we're going to do is do our decrease again. So ten stitch decrease, which brings five, if that makes sense. So that was one two, three, four, and the last one, five. Okay, so that is the heel done. There we go. Now what we're going to do is go back to working in the round 
and you're going to be doing 20 rows. Now, oh, don't forget to bring your stitch marker up. So put that stitch marker in the stitch bef just after that last decrease you did. And remember, when you're counting, you can either use your stitch marker or there's that decrease and count up from that decrease. So I'm going to do 20 rounds and this is for the leg. So it will do this leg part here. If you want a long leg, do way more stitches. This came just uh, a little bit up the calf. Um, okay, so it is adjustable. Do as many uh, rows as you like. And so I'm going, as I said, I'm going to do 20 rows. And then I'll meet you back here and we will finish off by doing the cuff. After your 20 rows, we've come to the last bit of your sock, which is creating the cuff. So the cuff is easy to create. It is doing front post, back post, double crochet. So let's move the stitch marker up to the last stitch of your last row. And how do we do a front post, back post? So front post, yarn over, and we go into this hole, this stitch here, and see the post of the previous stitch? We go behind that into the next hole there. Grab your yarn, pull it through. Grab your yarn, pull through the first two on your hook, and grab your yarn and pull through the second two on your hook. So that's your front post double crochet. Now a back post double crochet is going behind your work into that hole there, going in front of that post of that stitch into the next hole next to it. Grab your yarn. Now pulling it through can be a bit tricky. So I often hold the stitch so that I can pull it through. Then grab your yarn, pull through the first two on your hook grab your yarn, pull through the second two on your hook. And that is your back post. So we're going to alternate between front post and back post double crochet as we go and do this cuff. So let's do another back uh, front post. So going from the front into the hole behind the stitch into the next hole, grab your yarn and do your double crochet. And then the front post going behind your work, coming to the front, front of your stitch, next hole, bring your yarn through, and that's the tricky one, because you go through, and then do your double crochet. So continue doing your front post, back post double crochet, until you come back to the beginning of the row, and I will meet you back here when you are at beginning of this row. So we've come to the end. And there you go. So the last stitch you should be doing would be a back post double crochet. And then you see that I've got a stitch here that I haven't worked and that's absolutely fine because I need to do the same stitch on the stitch that I had in the pre in that row. So, because I'm working on top of it and creating a rib. So, because I'm creating a rib, that's fine to skip over that. That's not a problem. So, we're going to do a front post on a front post. And a back post on a back post. Front post on a front post. Back post on a back post. So, continue another two rows doing a front post, so that's a back post there, a front post on a front post and a back post on a back post for two more rows, so therefore you're doing three rows in total. And I will meet you back here when you have finished your two rows, two more rows, having three rows in total. 
okay so I've finished my three rows and now we are finished well except for tying off so let's cut the end of the yarn and then do a slip stitch into the next stitch which is going behind grab the yarn through and then pull straight through that loop on your hook and there we go you can take your stitch marker out now and besides tying in any loose ends there is your finished sock with your matching other sock there we go well I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial everybody and uh, seeing the difference between the last week's video of working from the top to the toe to this week's video working from the toe to the top let me know in your comments below which way you think is the better and you can also Instagram me on at lucky underscore platypus one and show me your photos of anything that you have completed and um, I enjoy seeing them all take care everybody hope to see you again at the she shed very soon have a fantastic day bye everyone